Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm going to try to keep this quick. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone who was so supportive with um, our live stream yesterday entitled, What is Racism? What is White Privilege? And again, our intention was not to go into current headlines because we all see that. It was to go into what are the meanings, what are the definitions, what is the American history behind these headlines. Um, and I just want to share with you because um, we received so much response and I want to thank everyone who opened your heart to Uma and Dr. Darrell and myself because our, our, our goal was to start a conversation or evolve the conversation. And I feel like we did that. Um, and of course, with any conversation, you have people saying, I don't understand, or I don't feel good about this. And so I just want to share with you real quick, the top items that had me on the phone for hours last night with people reaching out to me. The top one was, um, a lot of people reached out saying, Benita, I feel like you were targeting me. I feel like you were saying, just because I choose to like not be involved with politics, not be involved with global affairs while I'm just staying in quarantine and trying to like keep my life good and, you know, send love out there. I feel like you're targeting me and calling me a racist and I don't feel like I deserve that. So after a lot of conversations, this is the, um, the conclusion that was the one that was amicably accepted between me and a lot of people who raised this question, which is, no, if you are not committing acts of racism, if you're not thinking thoughts of racism, Obviously, as you're living in your daily life, you are not a racist. If you're not a racist, you're not a racist. However, when people are reaching out and asking for your help, saying, I need your help, people are dying and I need your help to help me not die, to help me support my friends to not die, to not be oppressed so that we can be equal with each other without fear. And you turn your back on them or you criticize them or say it's your own fault. At that moment, you are being a racist. So if you yourself are not a racist, you can still, I mean, none of us are perfect. We're all in evolution. So here's how I likened it that most people got it. Um, most of us going through our lives, we are not advocates for uh, social services like preventing childhood abuse, children from being beaten. The majority of us were like, yeah, I would never be in favor of that, but it's not our career choice and it's not where we spend our lives. So we do spend our lives maybe raising the children we have in you know the best way we can. So you are not a child abuser and you are not a child neglector because, and that just doesn't even fit in your life. You don't even have to think about it because you are making choices in your life where the children are loved and nurtured and cared for until the day you're say at the grocery store and you see a parent just screaming at their kid and whacking at them. I told you, you're not getting lucky charms, whack. At that moment, the choice you make defines, are you now a supporter of child abuse or are you now still someone who stands for the well-being of children? If you walk by and you don't even say or do anything, you have now gone from being a child nurturer to being a child abuser because your silence, your in action is supporting the abuse of children. There are plenty of options you can do. You'd say, but I don't wanna get involved. You can go to the store manager. 
you can call 911 on the spot, go outside and say to the police officers, they come, I don't want to be in a confrontation because my persona is not strong enough to deal with that. I don't want to have nightmares or terror that this woman and her family or this man and his family or whoever are going to like find me at my home and harm me and my family. Like it is okay for you to care for self as you need to. In my opinion, it is not okay to stand by and see injustice occur in a way that harms another, especially an innocent human being. That is why we were saying, what is white privilege? The privilege is that it's not something you had to think about before. Um, I'm also going to liken it to all of my like really amazing male friends who contacted me in panic, in like terror when the hashtag Me Too movement started saying, Benita, you know me, I'm one of the good guys. So why is it like it's so unfair that suddenly I'm losing work, I'm losing jobs just because I'm a man that um, a lot of my friends are self-employed. So we work like job to job. Or that now suddenly I have to watch what I say because what I say can be taken the wrong way. Like, sorry, an ant was going down my bosom. <laughs> That's so inappropriate. But saying like, why is it like, it's not fair that I'm one of the good guys and suddenly I have to tolerate this. What are we gonna do? And I'm like, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna say, good. I am glad that you're experiencing this, not because you deserve it, but welcome to the club. You are now experiencing what I as a woman have experienced my entire life, what every person of color has experienced their entire lives. You are now experiencing what everyone who's not a well-educated white guy, you are now experiencing what the rest of us are experiencing. Now I'll tell you, some of these people who came to me, they're not like white, white, but they have the white privilege. They have the credit that is allocated to white. And if you watch our video yesterday, I have the link in the description here. Dr. Daryl Thorne did a wonderful job of explaining colorism, racism, and white credit. Um, so it was interesting the number of people, again, who contacted me and said, Bonita, it's not fair that I feel like you're talking to me and I don't get to talk back. It's so unfair. If you're going to say things, then it should be an open forum and I get to respond in something more than just a little comment in the Facebook comments. I said, but this was a conversation. Things were being said out there, many of them by white people who say, I don't understand. You know, white people whom I know are highly educated, caring, you know, people who are involved with their community saying things like, Black people, you should know looting and rioting is not going to advance your cause. I'm like, they don't know. Like, they're judging without understanding. And these are people that I love, that I like, who stand beside me and I beside them with a lot of stuff. So we need what this video was our reply to a conversation that was put out there. And if anyone has a reply to what we said, I encourage you to do what we did. I mean, I'll tell you, we were quaking in our shoes. We were so like, like we, you know, we're not newscasters. We're just regular people putting our message, you know, our concerns out there. We didn't know, like, are we going to be articulate? <laughs> are, are people going to understand what we're saying? You know, so um, have this encouraged we had and put your thoughts, your words, your questions out there. Um, or come and join me and I will have a conversation with you in a live stream. You know, I will do that if you have questions that you want out there. Join me. I'll do that with you. And I promise I will be res as respectful as you are. Um, but if I, I just need to explain, 
Uma, who's here, Uma Alexandra Bipet, um, reached out to me last week in like, in tears, in like, like holding back hysteria because of the hate crimes people were posting on her personal Facebook page, not her professional one, her personal one, when she was saying, my white friends, why I'm looking on your Facebook pages and I'm not seeing you crying out alongside us. Like all of her friends of color were saying, where is the justice? Black lives matter. You know, stop the murdering of innocent people. Everyone is a human being. And she was looking on white pages, especially she and I are both light bringers. So the light bringer pages, uh, you know, the healers, the spiritual people, she was not seeing any of it. And um, I mean, not any, but there was a discrepancy. So all she did was say, white friends, especially my healing spiritual white friends, please join us with sharing this. And the response she got was, um, at first I'm like, well, is this just for Uma? But I went and I looked on pages of a lot of black male friends and I called black friends the black male friends, it was weird. I saw more of a positive response to them, but the black female friends, especially those single moms with children who were people non-white, so, so much hate coming at them, so much, how dare you put this toxic stuff? Here are things that I saw on not just one person, multiple responses. You should die. I hope someone shoots your children in the streets. I'm going to make sure your business is destroyed. I'm going to make sure you never feel safe. And these were comments from people who are supposed to be healing, spiritual, energy, caring community leaders saying this to them. So when people say, Benita, I feel like you targeted me unfairly and I didn't get to respond. This was our response because of all of the people who were responding with such vitriol. And you know, I can't even express some of the things they said because I cannot bring the words out of my mouth. And I used to be a chef, so I can curse pretty hardcore. I saw things in there that were just pure hate. And I'm like, why would someone who's a person of love spread hate to someone who's asking for support? And the answer that came to me is what we addressed in the video. If someone says to you, you have white privilege, and you're like, I don't feel like I have any privilege. Are you calling me a racist? That's the response. I just, that's my theory. This is not proven. That's my theory that people who are told they have white privilege take offense because they think they're being told they're a racist. And these are two very different categories. White privilege is not something you do. It's just something society gifts to you. And I'll tell you, I've had a hard time because I'm a woman in a male dominated field. I'm not gonna go into there, but trust me, I can't tell you how often I was told you're doing too good a job, you're making the men look bad. Or where my employers go into the, uh, the credit part of the documents of like the spreadsheets and stuff I would make and switch it to the name of my male assistant, give him the credit for the work I did. And then I get fired because they're like, we, we just cannot have a woman with this much power. You know, the men don't even understand what you're talking about and that doesn't look good. So, and that's not because of my personality, trust me, <laughs> it's because of my gender. So if someone says to me, I have white privilege, I'm like, wow, just imagine if I weren't white, how bad that would suck. Because if I weren't white, it would be so much harder. And that's white privilege, that you get certain benefits that everyone should get. And you're like, but I worked hard for everything I had. Yes, however, there are other people who work really, really hard and they can't get what you get. So that's, you know, look up white privilege. I urge you, look it up because, um, you know, it's a thing and we should understand it because it's a thing that's creating 
riots all around our planet right now. So we have to understand it. The answer is not to blame the people who are saying, stop killing us. The answer is to say, how is this happening? What do I need to do to heal it myself? And what do I need to do to heal my community? Not everyone is going to be an outspoken advocate. You know, some people like if you are, you know, have health issues, if you are someone that you can only take so much anxiety before you are overwhelmed, you have to work within your parameters. You know, it, if you need stay in quarantine, you know, look at your needs as well. And, you know, would say, you know what, I have white privilege. I get to live in a nice home. No one in my community is rioting. I have to like maintain a certain level of lifestyle that I am able to maintain and no one's bothering me. So I'm going to maintain this because I need to for my emotional well-being. But I will also open my mind. I will also like respond to conversations. I will also maybe reach out to people and say, I'm here for you. Because our brothers and sisters of what color, they need us to do that. So, um, gosh, darn. Oh my God. There was something else. I knew I should have written it down. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I won't forget. These are so important. So just, I just want to say, I want to thank everyone because we've got a lot of supportive response. Let's keep the conversation going. Let's keep the conversation going and let's make sure we do our research before we cast any judgment. Thank God for the people with cell phones who are showing live streaming videos on you know, social media, which is forcing the news journalists to acknowledge and show the headlines that the people who are doing the peaceful marches are not the people doing the looting and rioting. And a lot of the people doing looting and rioting based on arrest records, based on those they're catching on video are white supremacists, clans members or like extremists um so understand when people are in a peaceful protest and other people are rioting they're two separate groups one is saying let's stand together and the other one is saying let's tear everyone apart which group do you want to stand with that's the question for you when you look inside your heart. Okay, well, thank you guys. And I know I'm throwing a lot of hard love at you all, but um, I also wanna say thank everyone who was so supportive of our um, live stream. And yes, uh, Dr. Daryl, Uma and I will meet again on screen. We will, and we will share with you with Uma's extraordinary passion and Dr. Darrell's amazing knowledge of history and sociology, her ability when we say, it feels like this is happening, say, yes, that is called blank. And this, you know, like, thank God for these two ladies. And then me, I'm just here, like, I don't know, trying to keep, I'm just here because I need to speak out and I don't have the words. I'm so grateful for my two friends who do. Right. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day and think, think, think for yourself. Use that beautiful brain you have. Think and draw your conclusions, draw your perceptions and reach out and talk with people. If what you feel is not in alignment with what you think you should feel, if what you think is not in alignment with what you think you should think, this is a wonderful opportunity to really get to know yourself and heal things in yourself, release whatever is keeping you from being your highest self. Thank you, thank you.